Hi guys, so let's have a look at making your own spiral bound books and we'll use templates that we make in Affinity Publisher. So from page design to spiral binding, you can do it all yourself. And in my case, I used Piano Sonata number 16 Facile from um, a music sheet. Music sheets are ideal for this because you can put them in a spiral bound book and sit them nicely on your music stand. So what are spiral bound books? Their notebooks and sketchbooks are great ways to put your thoughts on paper. But if you can't find the perfect one, well luckily it's easy to make one at home and you don't need a lot of special tools or supplies. Once you know the basics of making a spiral bound book, you can make all sorts of books from notebooks to sketchbooks. You can even print out short stories and bind them yourself. So let's get started and make the covers for a letter size book that's 8.5 inches by 11 inches. That's US standard size. Now for the basic covers, cut two pieces of cardboard down to the size you want. In this case, exactly 8.5 by 11 inches. Use a metal ruler and a sharp, cra sharp craft blade to cut the cardboard. Thin cardboard from the back of a pad of paper or cereal box will work the best, but you can use chipboard too. Cut some colourful paper to wrap the covers with. The paper needs to be one inch longer and wider than your cover. You can use any type of paper you want such as scrapbooking paper, wrapping paper, or even construction paper. For a more unique look, create your design on the computer, then print it out on high quality paper. And we'll use our template for this. Now continuing with the cover, glue the paper to the cardboard. Turn the paper so that the blank side is facing you. Brush a thin layer of liquid glue. Modge Podge, Tacky Glue or White School Glue even onto the cardboard. Place the cardboard glue side down onto the paper. Make sure that it's centred. You can also use a glue stick instead. Smooth the paper down if needed with a ruler or credit card. Work your way from the middle of the cover to the outside. Now glue the inside cover paper. Cut paper from the ins for the inside covers. Cut two sheets of paper that are half inch smaller than your cover, both lengthwise and widthwise. Try solid coloured paper if your cover is fancy, and pattern paper perhaps if your cover is plain. Glue the paper to the back of each cover. Turn the cover so that the paper side is facing down. Coat your cut paper with glue, then press it down onto the cover. This will cover up the bare cardboard and overlap part of the wrapped edges. Smooth the paper down as before, then wipe off any excess glue. Now, part two, we're getting into our front cover template. And there you can see that on the left, there's the front cover template. Let's begin by making our template and publisher. I've made the template on my iPad mini, but it's the same process on the Mac or the PC. And the templates that I included on the download website work on either the iPad, the Mac or the PC. Because they're templates, you can use them anyway. Just use the templates I've supplied if you don't want to go through this process. But it's good to go through this process so you know exactly what you need to do for different sized uh, templates. Just download them from the download folder in this case on the website. The address is in the description. Now start by opening Affinity Publisher. Create a new document and then select print from the presets and the letter size which is 8.5 by 12 inches. On this page uncheck facing pages and set number of pages to 1. And you can see in the image there that I've got that. Everything is in order there. And I've also got Default Master set to off. You don't, you don't want a master page. You, you actually don't need a master page for this. It's just one page. 
Now, margins and bleeds, that's the other tab up the top there. Set the margins and set the bleed and click on OK. Now, the margins, the left margin is 0.396, the right margin is 0 0.140, and top and bottom are 0 0.125. The bleed area is 0.125 all the way around. Now, of course, you can use the supplied templates. And now that you have your front page designed, you can export it as a template so they can use it over and over. Name it front cover. And you can see I've got their front spiral bound. No mistaking it in the list of uh, templates that you've got. When you've clicked OK, your front page will look like this. And you can see the margin lines there, very close to the edges, except for the left hand edge, which is where your spiral binding goes. Now part three, the back cover template. To create your back page, simply duplicate the front page file, open it and select document setup and swap the left and right settings, then export that as the back cover. Now you can see on the margin size there, the left one is now 0 0.140 and the right is 0 0.396 and everything else remains the same. Too easy. Your back page will look like this. Now you can see your spiral bind margin is on the other side. Now you can now load the background template images into the templates if you wish. Now I've supplied those, and you'll see them there. These images go right out to the bleed edge. So don't be confused by this. They're slightly larger than 8.5 by 11. Because I've got them right out to the bleed edge. So they completely occupy the whole space. The actual document will be trimmed to the trim size. If you export this as an image, that will be trimmed off and you'll be left with just the part you want, 8.5 by 11. This image is to help you design your book cover design. These are the two background images, front and back, and you can see them there. Very easy. If you like, you can put an image in there that doesn't go right out to the bleed, but just goes, fills the safety area, and that's what you want. Now, creating the interior. This is the interior template. You might want to use a template for your interior. If you've got a PDF file of sheet music, which I have later on, it will just fill straight into this quite neatly. Create the template for the interior. You can design the interior content as you see fit. I'm using music scores as an example. Now facing pages on, this is the, still it's a letter, print, and the general. You've got facing pages on now. I've set the number of pages to 10. That's how many pages of sheet music I had. And default master is on, because I might want to do page numbers and put other stuff there. So you can turn on your master page for the interior. There's nothing else you need to worry about there. Everything is on, it's 8.5 by 11, it's in inches, and image placement I prefer embedded. Some people use linking, but you can run into problems with that. I prefer embedded for short documents like this. Now margins and bleeds, the inner margin is 0.396 and the outer margin is 0.140. Familiar numbers? Of course they are. When happy with your template, export it as a template and also save it. Now, part four, hand building the book. Cutting and punching the paper, or you can take your work to an office supplies for binding. If you print out your front covers and your back covers and your interiors, you can stack them all in a neat stack, take them along to a a print shop, office supplies, places like that. They'll do that while you wait and just ring bind them. They have hole punches there 
and all sorts of neat things that speed up the process. So don't be afraid to do that. Just stack them all up, take them along to the office suppliers and say, would you ring bind this, please? And the helpful people behind the counter will only be too happy to do that for you. Now, the interior. To print your interior using standard letter size paper to the same size as the covers. You can use lined paper, printed paper or even sketchbook paper. And you can see I've got there is some sheet music. Now, the interior, use only 20 to 40, <coughs> excuse me, use only 20 to 40 sheets of paper to the same size as the covers. You can use lined paper, printer paper, or even sketchbook paper. Avoid cutting more paper than this, especially if you're using thick sketchbook paper. If you cut more paper, you'll need to make a bigger coil, which is more likely to warp out of shape. If you're using an old notebook, cut the paper in half and use that instead. Now, create your punching guideline and template. Take one of the pieces of paper you just cut. Orient it in the direction you want the cover to go. Use a pencil and ruler to draw a vertical line down the paper about two millimeters from the left side edge. You can put the binding along the top edge instead if you want to. In this case, draw a horizontal line two millimeters from the top. But we're not worried about that. You can have it either way you want. Punch your first hole along the center of the line. The hole needs to be the right side of the line so that it's closer to the middle of the paper than the edge. You can make the hole with a thin nail, a three millimeter screw punch, or perhaps a one eighth inch hole puncher. Don't use a regular hole puncher, it's too big. If you make a horizontal line, punch the hole below the line instead. You can find these tools in the scrapbooking section of an arts and crafts shop. Now make more holes, spacing them two millimeters apart. Work your way up and down from the middle hole. Try to space the holes as evenly as you can. And leave about five millimeters of space at the top and bottom of the paper. You don't want to go right to the edge. They rip out too easily. Punch holes into the rest of your sheets of paper. Place the template on top of four sheets of paper. Punch more holes into the stack using the template as a guide. So you don't have to do one at a time. You can do four at a time. And if it's thin paper, perhaps even five. But be careful and don't be afraid to make mistakes. Now, create more holes in the front and back covers. Lay your template on top of your front cover. Punch the holes, then lift the template away. Repeat this step for the back cover. Stack everything together. Place the back cover face down, stack the paper on top. Place the front cover on top, face up. At this point, you can also insert other items into your book, such as folders and sticker sheets. Now, use binder clips to hold everything together. Tap the stack against the table first to make sure that everything is aligned, especially the holes. Place binder clips along the top, bottom and right side edges. If you're making a top bound book, mm, place the clips on the bottom and side edges instead. Now wrap thick wire around a pen. Get some 16 gauge stringing wire and you can find it in the beading section of an arts and crafts shop. Wrap it around a thick pen or a thick pencil. How many times you wrap the wire around the pen depends on how many holes you have. If you have 24 holes, wrap it 24 times. Trim off the excess wire with wire cutters. Every so often, squish the coils together so that they're nice and tight. Now, you can see what we're doing there. Slide the wire off the pen. Gently stretch the wire until it's about the same length as your book. If you put the holes along the top of your book, then stretch the wire to match the width. That's fairly obvious. Twist the wire through the holes. Poke one end of your coil wire into the first hole on your book. Twist the wire until it reaches the next hole. Push it through the hole and twist it again. 
Keep twisting and threading the wire until it comes out the last hole. Bend the ends of the wire inwards. Use needle nose pliers to pinch the end of the wire at one end of your book. Bend the wire inwards towards the coil. Repeat this step for the other side of the book with the other end of the wire. Trim the excess wire off if needed. If you still have any wire sticking out past the second or second to last coil, you'll need to trim it off. Do this with a pair of wire cutters. Now you're finished. You can use this method to easily create your own notebooks, travel documentaries or anything that you need a notebook for. In this case, I was making a music score booklet that I could open flat on a music stand with the score pages showing. Wire, papers and even cutters are all available from any good craft store in most countries. So thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you have a lot of fun making your textbook. Go ahead, make my day. Subscribe.